Today, we're going to take a tour of version one of my two channel listening environment. Hey everybody. So you guys have seen my home theater quite a bit, but I wanted to do something a little bit different up in my living room. I don't really have a good place to test out two channel equipment. So I decided to take the living room and not do kind of a 5.1 or 7.1 system, but really focus on two channel and two channel only. So I took the bits and pieces that I had laying around and fit together what I consider to be a pretty good starter two channel environment using that gear that I already had. And I think a lot of you guys could probably do the same thing using equipment that you just have sitting around. Now, I'm gonna step through this pretty quickly and I'm gonna show you what I've got going on and kind of the reasoning of why I went the way that I did and hopefully give you some ideas of what you might do in the future and what I might do to upgrade this as well. To begin, I'm gonna start with the sources and work all the way down to the speakers and talk a little bit about why I made the choices that I made and how I hope to be able to upgrade this in the future. Now, to get started uh, with the source, this is a television room as well as a two-channel environment, so I need something that can source and stream. So I had a NVIDIA Shield laying around, and I've got that stuck down on the bottom shelf. You can't really see it from the outside world, but this is one of the new versions. It's the one that looks like a little tube, and uh, it has HDMI out. Now, that proves to be problematic in a two-channel environment because there are not a lot of preamps in two-channel world that accept HDMI. So I grabbed this old Denon that I had on the shelf and put it into service. This used to be in my home theater, but when I upgraded, it got relegated to the shelf. But in this environment, I think it's a pretty good go-between until I get something more appropriate for the two-channel world. This will accept the HDMI. Um, it also does all my DAC work, um, but I'm using it as a preamp only. I'm not using it for any amplification. Um, other than the NVIDIA Shield, I've also got an Xbox for gaming as an input source. In the future, I would like to add a high resolution streaming source, maybe something like a Blue Sound Node 2i, also running into a more appropriate preamp, maybe something from NAD or similar. Um, but today, you know, I've got what I've got, so it suffices. Um, I'd also like to have a discrete DAC. And I'm not much of a DAC guy at this point, but I plan to get there all as part of this effort. So yeah, I would like to remove this Denon, have high quality streaming device, high quality preamp with external DAC services. Now, coming out of the preamp environment, we go to the amplification environment. Today, I'm running two old class AB amplifiers that I had. These are a 50 by two, but I've got them bridged down to 100 by one. So I've got two channels of 100 watts of AB power. They sound pretty good and I bought them used and they're okay for what they do. But what I would like is something with a little more juice. Um, I would hope to have somewhere from 200 to 400 watts per channel in a much larger form factor. I would like to go with mono blocks because they look cool, right? It gives you that true two channel feel. If you look toward the projector, you'll see on the floor I have spaces where I could put mono blocks on either side of the ultra short throw projector. I think that'd be kind of a cool look to have that high end two channel mono block amplifier on the floor kind of presentation for those amplifiers. And that allows you to get kind of an ostentatious amplifier or set of amplifiers and put them out so people can see them. Also, they're not cooped up with all the equipment, cooling's a little bit better, and man, there's a lot of cool wow factor when people come in and say, what's going on with those badass amplifiers? So that's kind of the idea for the future for the amplification stage of this environment. So what I've decided to do is take my speaker stack and turn it into a true full range left and right channel presentation layer. Um, and what that means is that I want the speakers to be able to play from 20,000 hertz all the way down to 20 hertz. And obviously a bookshelf can't do that. So what I've done is I've added super tweeters and a dedicated subwoofer on each channel. Now you'll notice that the subwoofers are mismatched. That's because this is what I have on hand. Eventually this will be a matched pair, but for today, you know, you do what you gotta do, right? Now, what happens is as the signal leaves my preamp, it travels over RCA because at this point, none of my equipment supports XLR. I do want to do XLR, but today RCA is what I've got. And it travels to the sub. From the sub, there's a crossover high pass that then sends the high pass information back out to the amplifier from the amplifier powered to the speakers. 
Now the super tweeter and the speaker, they're wired in parallel. So they're not independently amped, they're just using that 100 watts and sharing that power. What this allows you to do though, is take that one channel and have full range. You know, the, these super tweeters go up to like 40,000 Hertz, which nobody can hear, right? I think I can hear maybe 16,000 or maybe 15 or 14 right now. Um, and then the subwoofer will take it all the way down to 20 Hertz, whereas the bookshelf speaker alone could not do that. So that allows you by sending the signal out from your preamp to the sub, having the sub do what it needs to do, send the signal back to your amp and then up to your speakers, you can use that subwoofer to extend the range of the smaller speakers all the way down to 20 Hertz or whatever that subwoofer might be able to do. Now, outside of the actual audio components, I wanna talk a little bit about what I've got going on for video. And over here, uh, you'll see that I've got the Vava Ultra Short Throw Projector. This thing will do up to 150 inches. And it's really amazing because it stays really close to the wall, works pretty well in daylight if you use a ALR or ambient light rejecting screen. For my screen, I use a VividStorm 100 inch ALR electronic automatic rising screen. It's kind of cool, it's got a wow factor. I actually won this in a contest and I don't know that I would have considered this before, but now that I've actually put this into service, it's amazing having a screen of this size in a living room. It is head and shoulders better than a 75 or 85 inch television. It's, it's massive. Now, it won't give you the quality that you get out of uh, like an OLED or a really, really good LCD, but it's close enough that without side-by-side -side comparison, you can't really tell, and the size is impressive. It's really nice to just sit back and game or watch a show, have this really good two-channel sound, and then have this really impressive video landscape in front of you. So I, I really can't recommend that enough. It's, it's really good. So outside of the audio and visual components, there are what I like to call the details, and those are things like, power distribution, cables, and that kind of stuff. And I really need to do a lot of work in this area because one, I like it to look nice. Uh, and cables, whether you believe they add or take away from the sound quality, they do add to your visual presentation of your environment. And it kind of makes you feel good to have an environment that looks good. Now, this is all using the black plastic looking cables that are included with things, and it's kind of ugly. So in that vein, I've got these power cords, and that's the name, cords, C-H-O-R-D-S from Audience. And these are pretty amazing power cords. They're super beefy, they're heavy, and they're not ostentatious, you know, they're not like gold plated glittery kind of things, but these are what I consider to be high quality, large gauge, good power cables um, that, you know, I think are a pretty good bang for the buck if you're into really upping your game all the way throughout your entire environment. So this is the kind of stuff that I wanna run through this entire environment. Everything from power distribution to your power cords, to your XLR cables, all the way down to your speaker cables. So, you know, that is a component of this that I want to focus on as I go through the build to make sure that I'm crossing the T's and dotting the I's if you kinda of understand what I'm saying. So the idea is to build the environment to be as good as it possibly can be. And I think cables and power will add to the experience. Uh, maybe you can't hear it, maybe you can, but visually when I sit back, I like to see it and say, yes, this is the perfection that I was looking for. I crossed the T's and dotted the I's. So to sum everything up, I sat down and created this two channel environment that focuses on quality over quantity using equipment that I already had. And it sounds really good. I hope that maybe you guys can kind of do the same thing in your environment, just using bits and pieces that you have laying around. Now also, as I step through the upgrades of this environment, since this is version one, I'm gonna cover all of those upgrades so that you can see how you cable these things, add pieces in, and understand how all of this stuff works together to create a harmonious AV system in your room. So if you've enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications when new content drops. And as always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.